Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be talking about housekeeping. What is housekeeping? It's one of the areas in home economics which refers to the management of duties and chores in running a household. Household members may perform this task or the family may hire other persons to do this for them. It also referred to the management of an office or establishment where employees stay for several hours of the day. This includes cleaning, cooking, home maintenance, shopping, laundry, and payment of house bills. The individual who manages the household is referred to as a housekeeper, employed to perform cleaning and other domestic tasks in a hotel or institution. In big establishments, a housekeeper may have his or her domestic staff. According to Mrs. Beaton's book of Household Management of Victorian Era, describes the housekeeper as second-in-command in the house. And except in large establishments where there is a house steward, the housekeeper must consider himself or herself as the immediate representative of her mistress. The most important component of housekeeping is house cleaning, done to make the home look pleasing to the eye smell better, safer, and comfortable to live in for all the dwellers and guests. Disposing of rubbish, cleaning of dirty surfaces, dusting on surfaces, and pieces of furniture, and vacuuming are all part of the chores in house cleaning. Important areas in house cleaning. Areas of the house that must be kept clean and sanitized are the following. Toilets and bathrooms, urinals, lavatories and their accessories, bedroom or sleeping quarters, living room and lounges, kitchen and kitchenware. Without cleaning the house or office, dust form on surfaces, molds grow in wet areas, limescale may harden on kitchenware and pipes, glasses may be blurry or stained, toilet may turn smelly and cobwebs accumulate. Principles and Concepts of Housekeeping Principles of housekeeping cover cleaning the inside of a home, including the furniture, removing rubbish, washing linens, floors, windows, vacuuming, and dusting. Having a clean home helps prevent illnesses and reduces the related stress of unkept home. Routine maintenance saves time in the long run. It's easier to scrub a tub every couple of weeks than it is to get the build-up scum if you only scrub it once every couple of months. Following the operism of having a place for everything and putting everything in its place will save you time looking for items. Daily principles in housekeeping, particularly in areas where sanitation is a concern such as kitchen and bathrooms, you should follow daily principles in housekeeping. Kitchen floors should be swept after each meal. Spot clean countertops, empty rubbish, and put all food away properly. Wipe surfaces down and allow to air dry overnight. Weekly principles in housekeeping. Some chores must be done at least once a week. Vacuum, sweep, or wash all floor surfaces at least once a week. Keeping floors clean will prevent any source of lint dirt, food from being walked upon and dragged to other areas in the home. A stitch in time saves nine applies here. Dust all furniture and wipe down any ceramics, photo frames, books, and electronic each week. All bed and bath linens should be washed in hot water at least once a week. Disinfect bathroom toilet bowls, sink, and tub areas. Better homes and gardens suggest that you start with the kitchen and bathroom when addressing the weekly chores because they are high traffic rooms and disinfecting is the key to prevent illness. Monthly principles in housekeeping. Look up and dust any moldings, ceiling fans, door frames, and bookshelves. Remove curtains prior to dusting and wash sheer curtains as needed. During the nice year weather, when windows are left open and the beautiful shears blows with the wind, they will get dusty, so monthly washing may be needed. 
bedspread, blankets on the sofa, rugs, and any other linens exposed should be washed monthly. For an effective and efficient housekeeping, amenities are considered and provided such as towels, linens, beddings, glasses, tablewares, pieces of furniture, appliances, and kitchenwares. Cleaning equipment, tools, and supplies are also necessary for complete housekeeping needs. What are the tools, supplies, and materials used in housekeeping? Cleaning and sanitizing equipment. Vacuum cleaner. This is used to remove dust particles specifically from carpet surfaces and upholstered furniture. This can also be used in cleaning hard surfaces. Floor polisher. This is used to scrub floor, strip, and polish hard floor surfaces and also to polish vinyl, wood, and parquet. Carpet sweeper. This is used in picking up dirt and some particles in the carpet. Carpet extractor. This is intended for dry foam shampooing of carpets. Dirt that stick or penetrates into the layers of the carpet is removed by using this. Cleaning cart or trolley. It is used to stock cleaning supplies and chemicals in order to make cleaning faster and easier. Cleaning tools. Tools and equipment need to be checked and maintained before and after each use to prolong their lifespan. Proper care includes a regular checkup especially their wiring, to avoid breakdown and prevent untoward accident. This will also lessen the cost of maintenance. Scouring pads. There are two colors, the green and white pad. Green is used for scrubbing rough, dirty surfaces. White is used for cleaning, painted surfaces, marble, porcelain, and mirrors. Dusting clothes. These are used to wipe or dust wooden and painted parts. This can be a towel float like. Polishing cloth. It is made of soft cloth used to polish metal surfaces in kitchen and in bathrooms and other parts of the house made of metal. Cleaning broom. It is used for sweeping the floor. Some made of hard materials can be used to remove cobwebs from the ceiling. Map with map handle. It is used for mopping the floor. This has to be wet usually to remove stains on the floor. This will also be used dry to wipe or dry wet floor to avoid accident. Floor and window squeegees. These are used to remove excessive water from the surface and corners, especially glass surfaces. These speed up the drying process of the surface. Toilet bowl brush. This is used for cleaning the toilet bowls. It is provided with plastic or wooden handle for ease in reaching hidden part of the bowl. Sponges. These are made of soft materials used to clean the surfaces. Trash bags. These are to use as linings for garbage containers to prevent the wet garbage from penetrating directly to the container. Tongs. These are used for picking dirt on the floor and cigarette butts from the ashtrays. In addition to cleaning tools and materials, a housekeeper also needs to use some cleaning chemicals. Wood polish. This is used to polish or shine wood surfaces, leather surfaces such as sofa and similar pieces of furniture. Insecticides. This is used to fumigate or eliminate insects and pests. Methylated spirit. This is a chemical used to polish all glass surfaces such as mirrors, windows, and others. Air freshener. This is used to spray guest rooms comfort rooms, or any area to give fresh smell or to remove foul odor from the room. Muriatic acid. This is only appropriate for removing hard dirt from cemented floors or similar surfaces. This must not be used in cleaning toilet bowls since it is very strong and it can damage the tiles. Safety measures in doing household tasks. Tips for safety and effective workplace housekeeping In a work setting, it means much more. Housekeeping is crucial to safety. It can help prevent injuries and improve productivity and morale. It is also a key to getting through health and safety inspection with few identified hazards and necessary corrective actions. 
This practice intends from home, traditional offices, to industrial workplaces, including factories, warehouse, manufacturing plants, and hotels. Number one, prevent slips, trips, and fall. All workplaces should be kept clean and orderly and in a sanitary condition. The rule includes passageways, storerooms, and service rooms. Floors should be clean and dry. Drainage should be present where wet processes are used. Employers should select adequate flooring, example, cement, ceramic tile, and other material, as different types of flooring hold up better under certain conditions. 2. Control dust. There are three main types of dust. The silica dust created when working on silica-containing materials like concrete, mortar, and sandstone. This is also known as respirable crystalline silica or RCS. The second is the wood dust, created when working on softwood, hardwood, and wood-based products like MDF and plywoods. The third one is the lower toxicity lead dust, created when working on materials containing very little or no silica. The most common include gypsum in plasterboards, limestone, mar marble, and dolomites. The third type is the lower toxicity dust created when working on materials containing very little or no silica. This most common include gypsum found in gypsum board and plaster boards, limestone, marble, and dolomites. Stop or reduce the dust. Before work start, look at ways of stopping or reducing the amount of dust you make. Use different material tools or other work methods. For example, the right size of building materials so less cutting or preparation is needed. You can always wear the proper mask when working. Number three, eliminate fire hazard. Employees are responsible for keeping unnecessary combustible materials from accumulating in the work area. Combustible waste should be stored in covered metal receptacles and disposed of daily. Carry out fire safety risk and keep sources of ignition and flammable substances apart. Avoid accidental fires. Make sure heaters cannot be knocked over or keep the area smoke-free. Number four, store materials properly. You must ensure chemicals and any other dangerous substances are stored and handled in a way that minimizes the risk and limits people's exposure to them. Storing chemicals according to the manufacturer's instruction keeping the minimum quantity of hazard substances necessary, storing incompatible substances separately, taking steps to prevent release or leakage of sub dangerous substances, keeping a spill kit near the storage area, and ensuring staff are trained in what to do in the event of a spill. Number 5. Clear the clutter. A cluttered workplace can lead to ergonomic issues and possible injuries. Because workers have less space to move, keep aisle stairways, emergency exit, and electrical panels and door clear of clutter and purge untidy areas. Empty trash receptacles before they overflow. Number 6. Prevent falling objects. Protections such as two board, two rail, or net can help prevent objects from falling and heating workers or equipment. Other tip includes stocking boxes and materials straight up and down to keep them from falling. Place heavy objects on lower shelves and keep equipment away from the edge of desk and tables. Also refrain from stocking objects in areas where workers walk, including the aisle. Keep in mind so workers are not exposed to hazard as they walk through the areas. Number seven, use and inspect personal protective equipment and tools. Wear basic PPE. Use a closed two shoes and safety glasses while performing housekeeping. Determine what type of PPE to wear based on the potential risk. Regularly inspect, clean, and fix tools. Remove any damaged tools from the work area. Number eight, determine the frequency. All workers should participate in housekeeping, especially in terms of keeping their own work areas tidy, reporting safety hazards, and cleaning up spills if possible. Before the end of a shift, 
workers should inspect and clean their workspaces and remove unused materials. This dedication can reduce time spent cleaning later. Much debris or contaminants the workplace releases can help determine the frequency of a housekeeping. A workplace should have a mixture of deep cleaning and more frequent lighter cleaning that involves sweeping and responding to spills. Number 9. Ask for help. Ask for help if the load is too heavy or bulky for one person. Check first if there are nails, splinters, rough strapping, and rough edges. Number 10. Create written rules. Written protocols could specify which cleaners, tools, and methods should be used as they are then formal and defined. That's all for today's discussion and thank you for listening.